Hello, everyone. Okay, I'm Christoph uh, van der Helst. I work uh, for the Belgian Railway Company. I'm a project manager. Uh, and today we'll present this with uh, Julien. Yeah, so I'm Julien Minet. I work uh, in Champs Libre, a small company in Belgium. And uh, so I work with Christophe on, uh, on this topic. Yeah, um, right now I'll start the presentation by giving you some context, uh, some uh, general uh, information. So basically the starting point of the uh, project with Julien is really the customers. So our customers, there are uh, thousands of them every day who like to take uh, their bikes on our trains. So uh, as a reminder, we are the railway, the Belgian railway company. Um, our customers are uh, lucky because actually we're maybe the only country in the world where you can take your bike in all of our trains, which is great uh, for our customers, also for us to offer this. But, but uh, this is definitely challenging because there are better trains than other, others. So uh, for customers, sometimes it's really easy to get on board. And other times, actually, it's quite complicated because uh, the door is small, the floor of the train is too high, and it's complicated. For us, this also means that actually there is sometimes an impact on punctuality. So when you have 10 bikes that want to enter the train and it's a complicated train, uh, it means that there can be a negative impact on punctuality. So uh, two years ago, actually, we decided to uh, create a route planner um, or at least to give information to customers to help them select the best trains, uh, the comfortable trains or the bike friendly trains uh, to get on board with your bike. Um, actually, you can see it here. Uh, we built it with uh, one of our uh, partners, which is uh, BMC, Belgian Mobility Company. Uh, basically, it's just a route planner uh, to give informations, uh, information to the customers about, okay, which train is easy, which not, and additional information. For example, the number of uh, bike spots uh, that uh, are available, theoretically. Um, this is a great tool. Uh, this is already working. You can check it. Actually, uh, you can just go on Google or on our website and find it. It's called Bike on Train. Um, but the, and one interesting thing is the feedback button, which has allowed us to also communicate with our users to understand better. OK, right now we give you information about the trains. Uh, how do you find it? Is it uh, useful or uh, are there problems? And actually, thanks to this, uh, we found out that uh, for many customers, of course, it was nice to be able to enter the train uh, knowing which train is better. But actually, often they have issues to reach the train and to reach the platform. And they have asked us for years to know, OK, what are the easy stations or the easy platforms where, for example, there is a bike-friendly lift or a bike-friendly uh, bike gutter, uh, for example, to reach the platform? And actually, there um, we uh, we have uh, information about our platforms and uh, the facilities to reach them. But actually, um, this information is far from perfect and is not uh, geolocated. And so uh, we started to think, okay, how can we improve this? And actually that's really the starting point of the collaboration with uh, Julien and with OpenStreetMap is that we wanted to investigate and to use, to try to use OpenStreetMap uh, to get the information there. Uh, voilà. Thank you. And so the collaboration started uh, just one year ago um, initially, Christophe was contacting the OSM community in Belgium by uh, the community uh, uh, address, email address of uh, OSM uh, Belgium. And finally, uh, Champs Libre, um, we, we, we got in connection with Champs Libre uh, where I work to, to, to look at, uh, at the data, at the OSM data in station, about the platforms, about uh, the accessibility uh, in the platforms. Um, so, uh, oh, we're missing, 
symbols. Or it's, it should be OSM plus uh, train uh, equal uh, love. <laughs> uh, so you might know that there are already a lot of projects going on with uh, OSM and uh, railways. Uh, this is the logo of the um, Open uh, Railway Map uh, project, uh, which is a kind of subset of uh, OSM data with a lot of, of people actually working in train companies. There are train drivers who are contributing to this, uh, to this project. Um, there is also the OSRD, which is, um, I think, a new project. It was presented uh, in Brussels this year at, at FOSDEM. Um, and it's about the simulation of uh, train network of our Europe uh, using uh, open source data and open source uh, tools. And actually, OSM is one of the of the best uh, sources of data for for, for this. And um, there is also a lot of, of project going on in in France with the French National Railway Company SNCF, uh, where also Jean Libre is, uh, is working uh, with SNCF. Uh, for uh, a quality insurance tool for station data. Uh, yeah, so and I'm sure there are other projects and I would be very happy to, also to, to hear from you uh, if you have uh, other projects around uh, in, in, this, uh, in this domain. Um, so what about the accessibility object that uh, Christophe was talking about? So it's just uh, how to access and to leave the train platform so you can have steps. And for bicycles, especially, you can have steps with uh, bike ramps, and you can have, of course, escalator, ramps, elevators, or a direct access from the street uh, to the platform. Uh, so this is a step, uh, and I, I've put some of the text that we use to, to map it. So, so what we did uh, this year is to map uh, not all, but some of the, um, of the access of uh, the platform of in the in the most used station uh, of Belgium. Um, so, um, yeah, another picture of, uh, of a step with a bike ramp in, a, in a concrete here. Uh, another kind of uh, bike ramp, uh, you also should know about this one, uh, in metal. Um, another fancy one in uh, liege guimain oh, Sorry, yeah. In a, in a natural stone, you have also an escalator here. Um, this is a ramp, so just a, um, an inclined footway that goes to to a, to a platform, uh, uh, which is very handy also for for bicycle. Uh, and the lift, and what can be useful to for a lift, an elevator, is to add um, some tags about the Oh, it is bicycle friendly, so you can use a bicycle tag, but also all the dimension tags like uh, the length, the width, and even the door width of uh, the, the lift. Um, and at the beginning, I was very curious about uh, how was the, the, the train station data in Belgium, because to my knowledge, there was no project about this before in Belgium. Uh, and I was very surprised that actually um, the totality of, this, of the Belgian station operated by NMBS uh, were present in the OSM data. Uh, there are even more stations. There are station, train stations in Theme Park, uh, Plopsaland, uh, Paradisa, and so on. There are also stations operated by local touristic train operators like in uh, Chemin de Fer du Boc, uh, Chemin de Fer des, des Trois Vallées. Uh, of course, there are some missing tags in, in the mapping of the station. It's not perfect, but at least all the stations were, were there, and it was the first starting point. Because we made some queries on the station, then we made some queries on the platform, and then we made some queries on the accessibility object. Uh, the platform, the, the quality of the data was quite good. Um, most of the station had platform, but sometimes big station and missing platform. Um, and about the accessibility object, well, it was quite variable for objects like uh, elevators, escalator, it was quite good. But for other access, like the direct access from the streets, the steps, and so on, we still don't know uh, uh, the completeness of the data. So we, we did not make a, a, a quantitative uh, assessment of, uh, of the data. Um, 
what we learned that is there is always a crazy wave of, of mapping, of course, uh, the stuff because, uh, uh, of course, people are using uh, different tags for the same things. So it's a well-known problem in, 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 in OSM, but actually it's not so much an issue. It's just that when you query the data, you have to to iterate over your query to, to cover all the, the edge case uh, about the data. Uh, in here in uh, Gens in Peters, the issue was uh, oh sorry that um, um, there was some uh, yeah here some some footways connecting the platform, but these are, these are f uh, private footways uh, just between the platform uh, and just for the personnel of the station and not for the for the public. Uh, and then another project about the accessibility, uh, except uh, aside the, the accessibility of platform, is to map uh, the platform in details, to know where are the zones of the platform. So the zone in the in the train station are uh, most often zone A and zone B, uh, and it's to know to to let the, um, the traveler about where to stand with his bike on the platform. Um, and so the idea, but we, we just started with the data collection, is to make uh, this kind of stuff, so a matching between uh, the train composition with, uh, for instance, where we know where is the first class car, where is the bike car, and a detailed mapping of the platform. It can be with the zone A, zone B, but it can be also with, for instance, where is the lift, where is the steps, uh, where, where are the different uh, objects. Um, and so we we did a, a little bit of mapping. Christophe did, did it uh, as well. So I did some, uh, but most most of the work is actually done by uh, some uh, students as a, as a summer job. And it was very cool also to have um, um, actually uh, the, the Belgian community to to find the student because uh, the first one Gilles uh, we see in the middle here. Um, is actually one of the top contributors of, of uh, the Belgium co community. He was mapping a lot of, of buildings. And um, in June, he said that he, he, he was looking for a job. He just graduated in, uh, in geography. And he's still looking for a job. <laughs> but at least we offer him a, a summer job uh, at uh, NMBS, uh, where he had to, to travel by train and map uh, out of station. Um, yeah, some uh, survey tips. So, um, so yeah, when, when we did surveys, uh, of course we take a lot of, of pictures. It's uh, something very needed to 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 remind you uh, about uh, what you've seen. So, so we use a um, smartphone. We use kind of this kind of camera like a GoPro for uh, taking image, time lapse image, also uh, video. Um, we also use some uh, laser rulers. I don't know if you know this, this kind of tool uh, to measure, for instance, the door width of the lift, uh, or even also or the the position of the um, of the object of the markers across uh, uh, across the platform. We also use a regular ruler, uh, this kind of stuff, and we took a lot of notes on paper just to. It's very needed to to not to be to be lost. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, last slide for, from me. Um, so it's, it's very cool to be to be um, part of the Belgian community. Uh, there is a, a good involvement of so, of the community with other people who contributed to to this project so far. We've set up uh, an element room to to discuss so it's a chat room where we can discuss about uh, this project and how to map and what are the missing uh, uh, things to do uh, there are detailed posts uh, diary posts uh, on the champ libre uh, account and also one from uh, from gilles so the, the second one and there you can find really detailed information and tips about uh, how to map things uh, what what is still missing in belgium uh, and of course, there is a landing page uh, in the wiki uh, about the project. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, thanks, Julien.
Um, okay, so thanks to the work of Julien, uh, thanks to the OpenStreetMap data, thanks to the many contributors, and especially the, the students huh, that we have, like Gilles, or others that are actually still working. It's not only summer job, but uh, this week, next week, uh, they will do uh, some hours, some days. Uh, to help us, as uh, Julien said, uh, now we're mapping new stuff uh, like uh, platform zones. Um, but the result is already uh, visible and accessible, so if you want to check, uh, you can see it uh, on this address. If you plan to take the train uh, later today uh, to come back to your place, actually you can check uh, what's the schedule of your train huh, to plan your trip. And you can have a view actually at the accessibility of the platform, of the track where your train will arrive. Um, and here, um, for example, you can see in Antwerpen Berchem uh, the accessibility of the platform 9, actually, which is uh, not that bad, but because there is a bike ramp, but actually it's probably not that simple. For example, if you have an electric bike, uh, some heavy bike, and Antwerp Berkem is definitely a good example. If you go to it uh, later today, have a look at the different uh, platforms and their access. Actually, it's really very random. Like some have escalators, uh, some have a bike ramp, some have nothing. So it's really useful to have this kind of uh, hood planner when you, when you uh, want to take your bike with you. Um, Voila, uh, that's the last slide. So basically, you now we are looking for uh, importing more data, huh? platform markers, uh, as Julien said. Uh, we are trying to uh, improve our tool and uh, to use all uh, available OpenStreetMap data. Uh, this will be accessible to our customers. This is already accessible, but we'll uh, put more and more. And um, actually, we are open to uh, feedback and to uh, discuss uh, to new collaborations. Uh, I guess uh, Julien will be happy if he can find uh, other uh, customers like SNCB, uh, because honestly, it's, it's very good. He's very experienced uh, with SNCF and now with SNCB. And actually, we're uh, interested in giving the feedback uh, more specific information if uh, you are a public transport uh, company or uh, uh, in any way if you are looking for this kind of data. Voila, thank you. Uh, and if you have a question, uh, just shoot it. So questions, anyone? You talked about uh, mapping um, zones on a platform, or I would call it sections A, B, and so on. Um, how do you tag them? And do you map them as nodes, or areas, or line strings? So, we don't tag the areas. We, we thought about uh, doing this uh, at the beginning, but um, actually we cannot see the areas on the ground, and they are not uh, really defined, even the NMBS does not have this data, except that maybe the platform should be divided in two parts, equal parts, but so we map only the markers, uh, the platform markers. Um, in Germany, we map them as nodes on the platform edge. Yes, yes. Um, so I, I, I saw that, and actually uh, <laughs> I, I've looked at, at this in Germany, um, a tag is using, and uh, it's, um, I don't remember, maybe platform sign, but uh, in France, they use another tag. It's highway uh, equal uh, platform marker. And um, so, so far we choose the French uh, way of tagging, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a tagging issue that maybe we can discuss because there are not so much uh, nodes, I mean, in the world, and uh, maybe we should, uh, we should, uh, yeah, I agree on, on the better tagging. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I was trying the, the app, well, at least the, the, the beta version, which I will definitely use. But yeah, attribution is a sensitive topic in the OpenStreetMap, and I don't see any attribution to OpenStreetMap data on the app. Is that possible? <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, this is a good remark. I'll check with our uh, uh, front end, uh, actually, but it's true. Uh, we use, of course, we don't only use OpenStreetMap data, huh? but uh, this is true. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, <laughs> Other remarks? Can this be expanded into um, wheelchair access in that uh, range of uh, users? Um, actually, right now, with this planner, we really focus on bikers, uh, people that want to take their bike on the, um, on the train. Um, it's a very specific niche. We have thousands of users, but it's not that many neither. And actually, um, it can be, let's say, for the moment, we don't really uh, plan to do a version specific with uh, people in a, who move in a wheelchair. But I think the experience and uh, what is done here could be really extrapolated and copied for wheelchair uh, users, even though it's a bit more, uh, how to say, you need to be more precise. Because, of course, for us, it's easy, for example, if there is just a step like here. For a bike, it's not that complicated. For wheelchair, I'm sure, I'm sure that actually you need to be very precise about what is possible. Uh, but I think, yeah, it's uh, definitely a possibility. And by the way, there is a SNCB app, uh, SNCB uh, Assist, where you can find information and book trips for uh, people in a wheelchair. But they don't use uh, OpenStreetMap data, unfortunately. Just a remark on that, uh, that if you add uh, like door width on the elevators, if you add the incline on the ramp and the width of the ramp, and all this data contributes back into OpenStreetMap, it will be useful for wheelchair users for guys with buggy strollers or whatever you name it uh, here in Europe. So, yeah, just contribute more. Yeah. Right. Test, test. Uh, how do you get the data from OpenStreetMap in your productive systems? Do you have any special tooling or data formats? Yeah, so actually, Sean Lee did not make the, um, uh, the import of data for the um, uh, route planner. Uh, but I, I know actually oh, the other company, BMC, did it, and uh, they use uh, InpoSM with a Postgres uh, uh, database. And, uh, but for the collaboration, we use a lot of, of just overpass queries to look at the data and to, to monitor. The change. Also, OSM share for monitoring the changes. There is also uh, hashtag, hashtag NMBS or SNCB. Yeah. More questions? Okay. This guy here. Uh, could you also ask your students to map the defibrillators in the stations? Defibrillators. Uh, alpha Echo Delta. Automatic exchange and uh, uh, external defibrillators. For example, this one in the Antwerp station central has disappeared. There was a new one, it has disappeared. No one knows where it is. And the second question, I heard uh, NMES uh, tries to install drinking water fountains. D drinking water fountains. Fontaine AO. Yes, they, they're looking for a contractor to do it. There are problems, but maybe in the next year it will be uh, realized. So uh, let's think about that. 
Yes, that's the question. Well, their students, they have nothing better to do. It. So when they are they, they can have that also. Uh, there's still time for questions. It seems that at the, at the end of uh, the auditorium, that this, that guy. Thanks. Uh, is there any tag uh, to do add on a um, railway uh, elevator uh, to specify if the elevator is uh, suited for bikes? Uh, because only the width and depth, I, I think, is not uh, completely standard. Yeah, so bicycle, so for example, a bicycle, yes. It will mean that the bicycle could be fully loaded without any uh, acrobatics, but sometimes you have to do some. Uh, uh, you have to uh, get up the bicycle, so maybe we should have a, a value for the bicycle key. That means uh, you need to get the bicycle up. Yes, and even bicycle equal yes would maybe means for some router that uh, you should be still keep riding your bicycle in the lift. <laughs> so actually, we also use bicycle um, this month. Uh, it means that you have to work with your bicycle. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it was a question for us, and we, we have no answer so far. So that's why we, we map uh, a lot of fun. We, we map some dimension of the lift cabin uh, because we, we found no norms about how uh, a lift should be for a bicycle. I don't know if maybe there are some norms somewhere, somewhere but uh, it's not easy to answer. It depends on the bike. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe we should have a, a proposal to add a, a value for for bicycle, uh, like if the bicycle can go fully uh, in the in the elevator, maybe like the capacity, how many bicycles can it get, and also um, the if the bicycle is uh, can be put uh, upside. Uh, so we have definitely to add like a proposition, I think. But it can be complicated to, yeah, to to tag, I mean, to, to have uh, some tagging harmonization. I, I think the dimension, the length and the width, and the door width are quite objective. And so from this, you can, you can uh, derive what you want. Because if, if we change our minds about the minimum size requirement for the elevator cabin, then if you have the dimension, it's, it's okay. Maybe it can be done a, a, an application deriving the data, and then you see using that 3D box model, you can derive which kinds of bike can fit there uh, for the final user. Mm -hmm. But on the OpenStreetMap side, you have the 3D box model. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we can imagine an icon. Uh, okay, so the bike should be like that, or the <laughs> bike can stay like that, or you can put two bikes, depending on the size of the elevators. So this is, was the session, this, it's, it's final, uh, and then uh, it's, uh, it, this session is done, so now it's time for the coffee break. So um, more applause for the presenters. Thank you, Max. Thank you.